Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm really excited to be talking about the Ambernic RG351P. So as some of you may know, I've got an entire section of the channel dedicated to retro gaming, so I'm quite big on old games. If you haven't seen that stuff, the link is here. So let's get to unboxing this thing and see what's inside. Okay, so on the front, you've got a very basic Ambernic logo. You've got the uh, design of the device there on the front, uh, model of RG351. So on this side, you've just got what it would look like inside. So the device, uh, you know, drawn out view there. And then you've got your uh, button layout here on the side. Pretty cool that they have the uh, internals basically on the box. Uh, so you've got your specs here, made in China. So I did buy a bundle, which is why I've got the case as well. And I got some freebies that are in there as well, which so if you don't buy the bundle, you won't get that. Um, you're basically just guaranteed to get the console, the charging cable and the use manual. All right, so let's open this and see what we have inside. You open it up, not enough on the back of that. All right, so you take this out and there's a charging cable underneath. Okay, so I've also got some freebies. Uh, I've got a uh, OTG uh, Type-C dongle and I've got a Wi-Fi dongle as well. So these, these are not that useful, but they are free. So that's good. I guess if I wanted to, I could sell them on eBay, get some money back. You've got uh, lens wipes, wet and dry. We've also got a screen protector as well. So let's, uh, let's put that on as well. You've got your little, little full color manual as well. So uh, that's, they're not usually in color, which is uh, pretty awesome. Okay, so let's put this back here and we'll take it out. Yeah, put it out there. Take it out of the bag. All right, and then you've got this protective foam layer here. Ooh, and there's the device. Let's look at the device in a bit more detail. The 351P is powered by the RK3326 CPU with 1GB of RAM. You also get a 320x480 IPS screen and a 3500mAh battery. On the back you get a set of rubber grips and not much else. On the bottom you have dual speakers, your reset button and your memory card slot which comes sealed by default. On the right hand side you got your volume slider which is styled like the original Game Boy's contrast wheel. On the top side you got dual USB Type-C, a headphone jack and your shoulder buttons. And lastly on the left side you got your sole power button. Whoop, there you go. You see it applying itself there if you do it right. Okay, so let's play some games. This is Mario Kart on the DS. Uh, as you can see, I can use both the screens. So that's a nice feature to emulate both the screens. Uh, I don't recommend it because obviously it makes it really hard to see because it's so tiny, but um, yeah, you can. If, for some games, you need it. This is of course the original Super Mario Brothers on the NES. Plays fine, obviously, and the speakers are actually pretty loud. A bit tinny and lacking in bass, but not bad at all. Okay, Super Mario 64, so, uh, so as you can see it's a bit glitchy, so the hand goes behind Mario, it's supposed to go in front. Yeah, the graphics are a bit glitchy. So the chipset can handle up to N64, you don't really want to go hide in that. Everything up to N64 plays well, and anything higher does actually play, but not at full speed and it's not ideal. This is Alien Storm, that's one of my favourite games. So nowadays you can pretty much emulate anything on the PC, so why would you choose a device like this? Well, there's just something about the tactile feel of playing on a handheld that's a bit special. Marvel vs Capcom on the Neo Geo. Apologies for the shake, I was desperately mashing the buttons to try and do the combos. So going back to it, with this device, you have all your games preloaded and in one place. It may not have the authentic feel of an actual Game Boy or handheld, but the convenience is hard to beat. Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. Classic. I think the device is the perfect size as well. It's not too big, it's not too heavy, it just feels right in the hand and the screen is a comfortable size. Okay, so as you can see it does play Dreamcast. Uh, it's not great, so it's, uh, it's not playing at full speed as you can see. Uh, the, some of the graphics are a little glitchy as well. So if you play about the settings, uh, you can actually get it to run faster. But I'm judging it more on the pick up and go experience. Because if you're going to tinker, there's loads of other options. There's the Retroid Pocket Go 2 and there's the uh, you know Raspberry Pi cases. Those are probably better for tinkering. So something like this you buy to actually play. Okay, so what do I think? Um, off the bat, build quality, excellent. Very solid, uh, very robust. There's, there's, like, there's no flex, there's no flex at all. And uh, yeah, all the buttons, all the buttons are really good. So build quality wise, really good. Fit and finish, very tight. There's no gaps or anything like that. It does not feel cheap. Just feels like a really well built device. Next up is the screen. That's very important because that's what you're going to be looking at 100% of the time, unless you spend time looking at the buttons for some reason. Maybe, I mean, I guess you could just admire the device. Just. Anyway, so because um, it's an IPS screen, it's not AMOLED or OLED. Uh, the black levels aren't the best. Uh, it's not bad. So overall, the colors are there. It's quite punchy. It's quite contrasty. Uh, resolution could be higher. But again, you've got to look at the price range. At this price range, I think the screen is pretty much what you would expect for the money. Um, I don't like the uh, headphone jack being on the top because then um, it's, it's, 
it sticks out. If you put headphones in, it sticks out that way. There is, uh, I mean, there's some problems with the emulation, like uh, Mario 64, for example, had some glitchy graphics. Um, so did, I think, the Dreamcast games, Crazy Taxi 2. You can actually fix them. By, you go into the settings, you can change uh, a lot of the settings, and that usually fixes most of it. So nearly all of the problems you have can be fixed. It just requires a bit of tinkering. So um, from an out-of-the-box experience, yeah, it's it's good, not perfect. Um, you know, for certain games, the controls are off, so you're going to have to uh, re remap some of those buttons. Okay guys, what's the verdict? What do I think of this device and should you get one? Um, I, I love the device. I think it's a really good device. I think you should get one. There's a lot of other devices like this out there and uh, you know the build quality won't be as good, the screen won't be as good or you know maybe the sticks won't be as good. There's various problems with them so as a whole package, as an overall, um, I think this is very hard to beat for the price. But I do actually recommend going for the bundle because um, the case is actually really nice. The official um, Ambernet case is really really uh, nicely made and it's got a space for your cable and that kind of stuff in there so it's got a little mesh pouch which you can put loads of stuff in there as well. Okay guys that's the end of the review. If you liked the video please like and subscribe. Uh, if you didn't like it leave a comment. If you liked it leave a comment either way leave a comment i just like comments so uh yeah i will see you next time